How are you guys? Welcome back to Wargaming China, the free channel where I platform my understandings of the war of resistance against Japanese aggression in China from 1931 to 1945. Now, I do this mainly for wargamers, modelers, and toy soldier enthusiasts, people who like a bit of obscure history. And today, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to be talking about this armored car here. Uh, the Harper and Hudford armored car and um, how it came to be and it's going to be quite a long story it's going to be quite involved and um, so go get yourself a drink or bugger off now um, so what I'm going to talk about today is um, the beginnings of the Sichuan armored force now, between 1931 and 1933, the, um, the two main warlords of Sichuan province, Liu Xiang and Liu Wenhui, were, um, according to most literature, in partnership together, Liu, Liu Wenhe Hui being the uncle of Liu Xiang. Now, as I said, between 1931 and 1933, most books will refer to you, most Western references will refer to um, the Liu Armored Force or the Sichuan Armored Force. So they don't really make it clear which of the Liu's the Armored Force is. So first off, um, I'm going to um, talk about Liu Wenhui and his nephew Liu Xiang. So if we go to Sichuan province in, the sub in the southern, southern China, we will see that um, Liu Xiang, his power base was around Chong, Chong, Chongqing and um, his uncle Liu Wenhui, his power base was around Suiyuan um, on the Tibetan borderlands to the north of Chongqing, Chong, Chongqing. And um, in 1932, there was a Tibetan invasion of uh, Suiyuan and um, Liu Wenhui, as commander of the 24th Army of the NRA, did his best to hold back this, this uh, Tibetan force. However, he failed, and he was driven from um, he, one of his main um, cash areas, which was where he was going, which was where the opium crops were grown. He was driven out of that territory, and that really affected his finances. But it really ate to him that he didn't receive any support from Chiang's government, who he was nominally aligned to, and he didn't receive any support from his uncle, Xiang. So, um, there seems to be around about 1932 a bit of a split between them, and um, the finances of Wen, of Liu Wenhui seem to have took a big hit. Um, now, come the, come the long march, and um, come the long march, um, Liu Xiang's 21st army was in fierce fighting around Z Xiao Kuo village with Red Army forces. And um, Liu Enhui with his 24th army, who had been forced back, did not support Liu Xiang. So that's important because for me, I really feel that these armored cars should be, it should be firmly stated that they, did, they weren't under the service of Liu Wenhui, they were in the service of Liu Xiang. Now, I want to talk now about um, Ford in China. Now, um, 
uh, an, an Englishman by the name of um, Harper after World War One. Um, his family were in, had a, had a Ford dealership in Hong Kong, and he decided that it was time to um, push the business into China. And um, he set off in his Model T on his own through China. Throughout China, he travelled on his own. He must have had a hell of a he must have been a very um, very brave and resourceful character. But it was successful. Because within four years, Mr. Harper had um, secured the distributorship in China for his sole distributorship in China for his Ford, for Fords, and indeed, so prolific was Mr. Harper selling Fords that Fords weren't referred to in China as Fords; they were referred to as Harper cars. So, um, in 1931, when Liu Xiang wanted some uh, Fords to, be, to commence, wanted some armoured vehicles, some AFVs to commence building his uh, Citroen armoured force, he would have turned to Mr Harper, because Mr Harper had to sell, the, had sold distributed ships for Fords in that area. It must be said that Ford did open a dealership, an official dealership in Shanghai in 1928, but it was only in Shanghai. And it's very doubtful that Liu, Liu Ziang would have gone all the way to Shanghai when he could have talked to his old acquaintance, Mr. Harper. Now, um, I just want to go on about the auto industry in, um, in China. Now, Mr. Harper was so successful in pushing the auto industry, in, in pushing um, the acceptance of automobiles in China, that um, in 1923, um, Ford invited um, 100 Chinese students to come and study production techniques and facilities in America. And um, indeed by 1924, uh, Sun Yat-sen, as the um, president of the Republic of China, um, personally wrote to Henry Ford inviting him to come to China and start an, an automobile factory. Now, I'm going to read from the letter because it shows you, um, it gives you a glimpse of what a visionary Sun Yat-sen was. So here we go. Here in China, you would have an opportunity to express and embody your mind and ideals in the enduring form of a new industrial system. He then goes on, I'm of the view China may be the cause of the next world war. It should remain economically undeveloped, thus becoming a subject of exploitation by Western powers. Now Henry Ford never went to China, but in 1930 the Ford Motor Company just decided to explore the possibilities of a Ford factory in China. Now they sent him Mr. Cowling, and it must have been very, very, very important to um, the Chinese government because um, in 1930 he was met by T.V. Sung the head of the Ministry of Finance. Now, um, I've never really talked about TV Sun before, but um, anything that the government is taking seriously, whether it's a military offensive or um, a deal, TV Sun is the man that does it. He's the finance minister. He's the man that brings the cash. No army moves in a serious way unless you see TV Sun arrive first with a war chest. Okay, so it must have been took very, took very seriously for TV Sun to be giving encouragement to industrial investments in China. However, Cowling also talked to American businessmen, especially miners in the mining industry. And they told him, look, as soon as you start to make a profit, the squeeze comes and then the high taxation, plus there's the bandits. And if you, if you can get past all of that, you've got to look at the communists too. And all of that made Ford think, mm, maybe Ford's future would not be so bright in China. And it wasn't, wasn't until 2001 that Ford set up a production line in China. Anyway, getting back to Mr. Harper. <clears throat> so Mr. Harper was quite a character. And uh, a very astute businessman. And I'll give you an example of how astute a businessman was. Um, Mr. Harper was, was in Yunnan and... Um, he was trying to uh, negotiate a contract with, with Lung Yun's government for the purchase of Ford trucks. 
Now, um, during the discussion, aircraft procurement came up, and uh, Mr. Harper was asked, oh, what do you know about aeroplanes? Well, he didn't skip a beat. By luck, he'd been reading an aviation magazine the night before, and he proceeded to just give it the full waffle. And when he left, he had, he had, he had secured that contract for 12, um, I can't remember the name of the aircraft, but for 12 uh, fighter, fighters. Now, um, on returning to England to buy those fighters, to procure those fighters, within a year he was back in China, but within that year he procured the fighters, organized a training program for Chinese pilots, and learned to fly himself. So he was quite a character, you know, he was, he was a real achiever. So I have no doubt that when Liu Zhang said to him, I need some armored vehicles, Harper would have gone, oh yeah, I can get them, I know all about them, I'm, I'm the man for that job. Now, who would Harper have turned to, to um, build his armored, be, build these armored vehicles for Zhang? Well, it just so happens that um, there were quite a few, uh, well, there were two coach builders that seemed to be capable of the job. One was, uh, was importing um, AA truck chassis to Guangzhou and then making equipment for the mining companies. But the other, which seems to, be, to me to be the much more likely of the two, is uh, Hudford Coach Builders. Now, if you bought a Ford in China and you want it to make, be made into an ambulance, or you want it to be made into a hearse, or you want it to be made into a refuse vehicle, or you want it to be made into um, a bus, Hudford of Shanghai were the men for the job, was the man for the job. So um, I have no doubt at all that um, this vehicle was um, coach built by Hudford. Now, there's another, there's another factor in this, and at this point, I'd like to thank all of those Ford enthusiasts out there. All of them, all of those uh, vintage Ford enthusiasts, all those guys talking about Ford in the 30s and the 40s. My own mate Pete from the Ford, uh, 1930 Ford Preservation Society, because these guys were just, they're just a, uh, a gold mine of information, a diamond mine of information, and it helps so much to talk to these guys and find out these names. Um, you know, and uh, because this is the first time that this uh, that this armored car, as far as I know, on, is getting documented, because um, it doesn't appear in any literature in any European language. It, it it's described, it's all bunched together as a Sichuan armored force. So this is the first time that anybody has attempted to. Um, explore this vehicle so um that's why i didn't feel too bad in calling it the harper hudford armored car because we can call it that at least for reference so for reference terms this is the harper hudford armored car so it's built on a four double a truck body and four double a was a three three, three liter engine with a straight four cylinder four speed gearbox and it was basically a Model A with a bigger, with a larger and heavier frame. They made them from 1927 to 1932, the Ford AA, and they made them all around the planet. In fact, they made so many of them, but by the time they stopped making them, they'd made 4.3 million of them in plants all over the world. So the Ford AA would also go on to become the basis of quite a few other armored cars. Indeed, Fords, when I, when I started my do the reading on this How many many armored vehicles have been put on Ford chassis there's a company in uh, Ireland the Thompson company that a family company that have only been uh, they've been armoring Fords for 80 years so um, it's nothing new to make uh, a Ford into an AFV um, now <clears throat> what was the armament um, I, to be honest, I couldn't define a machine gun from the picture. I, this, 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 this is a vehicle that I saw on a British Pathé News footage. There's six seconds of it. It's in a column with, um, like, it looks like a parade with uh, three like it and two 
of another sort and it was knowing what the other one that was in the picture that let me know that this was indeed the Sichuan Armoured Force that I was looking at in the footage. So, um, the Sichuan Armoured Force, as I said, he, uh, Ziang had three, perhaps four of these commissioned. And what their armour was, we can't, we can't tell. But going back to Hudford, um, look, they did quality work. You can see it, there's plenty of photos of their work on cars and if, in, in fact if you look at any Ford in China that's just not a standard body it's probably a Hudford conversion a Hudford coach build they had big works um, <clears throat> so if you I've, there's more to say I've just got to remember it all guys um, now going back to uh, Liu Wenhui right so in um, and going back to all, to both the youngs, you know, I want to enter how this ends up. But these these um, and if you like this, hey, give me a like. And remember, this is the first time that this this armor car has been discussed in English, as far as I know. So I reckon if you like this kind of stuff, you should subscribe. And I reckon you should share my stuff. It, I, you know, I've, I invite you to share my stuff. Send it to a friend. Send it to an FB group. This is the Harper Hartford armored car. I guarantee you, whoever you send it to, never heard of this armored car before. So what happened to Liu Xiang and Liu Wenhui? Well, Liu Xiang passed away in uh, early January 1938, and um, there were so many, there were so many official NRA troops in his province by that time that uh, when the um, nationalist government had to move its um, its capital once again and finally settled on Chongqing, that was really the end of the Sichuan um, clique. You know, and as I said, Liu, Liu Wenhui and Liu Xiang with the um, with their with their big movies in the Sichuan clique. Um, I want I will be bringing more stuff for Sichuan clique. There's two more armored cars to come, so um, I don't know when I'll get around to them. I have I, ha, I, ha, I have I have one of them. I'm going to build the other one. Um, this one um, I built from uh, a resin vehicle that I dropped uh, my only tips for you on this one is just um, an armoured plate armoured plate here just it's basically just a four truck with some armoured plate and a box on the back and um, but as it was um, not field made I mean it wasn't made in the field workshops because from the pictures it, it, it is nicely made you know you can see from the box on the back there's um, the, the shape is even, the fitting is even, the trim's even. There's a few features on it that um, I haven't incorporated because I, I don't know how to do them, but I will probably add them. But a lot of the times, you know, I, I think if I do that now, I'll screw it up. So I'll wait until I've got a good technique to do that. So there is um, three things on the side that I have to do, but um, they're very minor and they don't affect that this looks like the Harper Hunford armored car. All right then. So Harper Hudford Armoured Car did it see service? Well, to be honest, the parade said it was in, so it was was um, filmed in 1937, and I've read and I actually love reading the accounts of um, British and American officers during the fighting in Shanghai in 37. Now um, there are so many references to Chinese armoured cars there, and another vehicle that I've identified of the um, Sichuan Armoured formation was captured in, in Shanghai. And there's, there's plenty of footage and film of it, um, footage and pics of it. So I really do think they did see, them. this particular model may well have seen combat in Shanghai, uh, but if it didn't see Shanghai in, com in combat in Shanghai, it definitely would have seen combat against communist forces. Even though, you know, it's, it's not really a combat vehicle. Um, you know, better than nothing, as the Chinese would have thought. I doubt they used it in an offensive way, but it would certainly have put off rival warlords or bandits parked next to a government building or, a, you know, a key position. Um, all right, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I get more subscribers because of that. I hope you press like. Thanks. See ya.